Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 403. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 398 to 405. Hey, uh, tricks 401 all the way to 405. We are doing quarterly or monthly reports that show the difference from the previous period. The last two videos, we did months and quarters with a pivot table. This one, we want to do show quarterly results and the difference from this quarter to last with a pivot table. But guess what? The quarters don't end December 31st. Now, I'm going to show you how to add two more fields that will convert this uh, for 2009. Really needs to be the first quarter of the 2010 report. So we need two extra columns. We need to get a year and a quarter. Now, what I'm going to show you here is directly from uh, Mr. Excel video he did uh, in the early 1000s. And I have a link up here that if you want to watch it, just an amazing trick for uh, uh, getting your pivot table to actually deal with quarters not ending December 31st. So you're ready for the year. Here's what we're going to do. Sum, and then we're going to use the year. And I'm going to click right there. What does the year function does? It just takes the year. So it'll say 2, 9, 9, 10, et cetera. But watch this. I'm going to just drag this down a bit. And we get 9s, 10s, et cetera. That's just no big deal. But what we really want when we get to 10 in the eighth month, because this eighth month is part of next year's report, we really want 11 here. So watch this. We're going to change this to this year. Notice the sum function has lots of arguments. So I'm going to type a comma. And the next argument is either going to be 0 for when it's the first, second, or third month, because those are all part of last year, or if the month is 4, 5, 6, etc., all the way to 12, then we want to add one extra. And watch this. We're going to use uh, a true-false. And we're going to convert that true-false with a double negative to a 0 or a 1. And then we're going to use the month, actually open parentheses, month of this. Now what is month does? It just gives you the month. So this would be 4, 10, 8. What do we want here? This 4 is uh, really should be part of next year. So we want to somehow get that 4 and turn it into a 1. That will add it to the year 9. So it will give us 2010. So watch this. We just say, hey, month, are you greater than 3? Right now, it will say true. So that will be true when we close off that parentheses there. That double negative will convert it to a 1. Now I Control Enter. And there we have it. It added 1. I'm going to double click this one and send it down. We've got to go find one where it didn't, 2009. So for example, here, see it saw that 3. The month said, hey, are you greater than 3? It said false. The double negative converted that false to a 0. And nothing was added to the 2009. Now the quarters, again, I'm going to put year here. This quarter, oh, when I saw Mr. Excel do this, he called it punting. I thought it was totally awesome. We're going to use the choose function. The choose function. You give it any number here, and you list the values. It's kind of like a lookup, except for instead of having the lookups in a table, you actually have to s list all of the values separated by, col by commas. Now, what do we want with quarter? We either want 1, 2, 3, or 4. Watch this. The, the index is going to be a number between 1 and 12 for us. So I'm going to put month of this. Right now, it'll plop, if I close parentheses, it'll, it'll put a 4 there when it gets down here, an 8, a 10, etc. So now, the possibility with month is that there are 1 to 12 values. So you literally need to list all 12 values. Now, what does uh, 4 need? Or I'm sorry, month. We have to start with 1, 2, 3. What does 1, 2, or 3 need? It really is the fourth quarter. So we put 4, comma, 4, comma, 4, comma. Now, that's month 1, 2, 3. What about when we get to 4? Oh, yeah, that's 1. This 422 really believes belongs in quarter 1, year 2010 report. So then we're going to put 1, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 2, comma, 2 comma 3, comma 3, comma 3, and then close parentheses. Control Enter, copy it down, and we'll go take a look when it gets, uh, let's say, uh, right here. Alt T U F for Formula Evaluator. Alt T U F. The month, I'm going to click Evaluate. 
it gives me a 5, right? So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that's what the choose. It's going to take that fist value, which is a 1. That's how the choose function works. All right, so now that was a very clever way, thanks to uh, Mr. Excel. Now, the pivot table is similar to the one we did a couple videos ago. I'm going to click in one cell, and I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut, Alt-N-V-T. I'm going to existing <coughs> worksheet. I'm going to put it right here. Don't put it right next to the uh, table, or don't put it too close to anything, because above a few cells is always the page field or, or a report filter. I'm going to click OK. Scroll over. All right, now we have our year and quarter. So we can simply drag the year to the row, the quarter to the columns, and there we have it. Uh, we're going to drag our cells twice to values. Um, we're going to come uh, to this field right here, and I'm going to right click value field settings. The field name I'm going to rename sales space. We have to put a space because there's already a, a field name name sales, uh, and then number, and I'm going to select number so that it's all formatted. And sure enough, all of our sales fields get that formatting and that field name. Now, um, I'm going to click outside here. We don't need uh, this stuff here. So I, you can. there's lots of ways to do this. Right click, pivot table options, and under totals and filters, you can say grand totals for uh, rows we want to uncheck and then it gets rid of it. Okay, we don't need this field list. So I'm going to close it and you can see it got rid of it. Not only that, but I'm going to actually highlight all of these columns and then double click. Zoop. I guess I didn't make it very much smaller. Oh, that's because we didn't change we haven't uh, dealt with this one. <clears throat> this one we want to right click value field settings. This is going to be the difference so really, we want uh, to show, when we get to here, we want to say this minus this and show me the difference there. So it'll be a minus. It'll be a drop in sales. I'm going to type diff. I'm going to say number format, number. Click OK. Show values as. This is such a great trick. Difference from. Our base field is going to be our quarter, because we're going from quarter to quarter where we want to see the difference. So I'm going to click quarter. And we always want to see based on the previous one. Click OK. Now I'm going to highlight all of these. Double click. Whoop. So that did make it much smaller. But uh, small enough. Let's add some formatting. Design ribbon. I'm going to click the More button. I'm going to click right there. I'm going to very carefully wait until my cursor turns that and click. That means I highlighted all the diff. And then I'm going to select some yellow. And I'm going to select some black. And there we have it. We have, oh, we one more thing. We didn't add any uh, number formatting. Right click, value field settings, number. I'm going to click number. OK. And so there we have our report. And this is based on our quarters, not the built-in default December 31st quarters that the pivot table uh, forces you to do. All right, uh, we'll see you next week. The next two ones will do the same type of reporting, difference between quarters, but with uh, functions. All right, see you next trick.